featured plant is called twin flower, also known as Linnea borealis. So this plant gets its name after the father of taxonomy, Carl Linnaeus, who you might have heard of. So there's a few things we can look at about this plant that are distinctive. So if you look beside me here, you'll notice that it's quite short. It's, um, you may think it's a perennial or an herb, but it's actually woody and is technically a dwarf shrub. So you can see it spreads along the ground in these trailing runners and the little leaflets come off in these side shoots. So if you want to have a closer look at the leaves, you'll notice that they are um, opposite on the branches, which is a good identification feature. They're slightly hairy, they're kind of elliptic to oval shaped, and they have teeth on the upper margins of the leaves, and they're smoother on the margins towards the base. So the other way this plant gets its name, twin flower, is because it has flowers that occur in pairs. So they have a little branching Y-shaped stalk at the top of the uh, at the top of the stem, and the flowers come out in little pairs, and they're quite fragrant actually. One of the most fragrant things in our Pacific Northwest forests, and they're like little tubular bells that hang down. And they're kind of a soft pink color. Later in the summer, they form dry nutlets that have these sticky little hairs on them, that are then transported around by animals and birds. So they'll stick into the feathers or fur of other creatures and get transported around. So they're not that commonly found, but they can you can find them anywhere from lower to mid to even high elevation forests and even open or dense forests. So they're pretty um, adaptable for where they'll you can find them. But when you do find them, they usually occur in a patch like this because they're a spreading clump. So that's it for today on Twin Flower Linnea Borealis.